now at 11. Holy crap, this side of the building just fell off. Part of a Southeast Portland store collapses. Hear from the owner who was inside when dust and bricks started to fill his shop. It's a case that shocked police. A dad passed out in his car. They say he was high on meth and his two young daughters were in the back seat. Whoa. A school bus narrowly avoids a crash that happened right in front of it. New details tonight on former trailblazer Brandon Roy's shooting. How he was trying to protect a family member when he was hit. It's the email you don't want to open. See the new scam that's hitting all kinds of Gmail accounts. And it was an unbelievably beautiful day outside. The heat returns tomorrow, but there's a catch. Your news starts now. Good evening. First tonight, bricks cover the sidewalk in southeast Portland. Firefighters say they're amazed no one was hurt when part of a building came tumbling down this evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm Joe Donlin. This happened near the corner of Southeast 48th and Division. The night team's Mike Benner is live there tonight. Mike, you talked with people who saw and heard this happen. Yeah, I sure did, Joe. One person telling me it sounded like and felt like a bomb went off. I can tell you over the course of the last several hours, a fencing has gone up around the building and the sidewalk that runs in front of it. The hope here is that nobody will get too close to the building just in case there's an additional collapse. At this point, it doesn't look like that'll happen, but you can never be too sure, especially after what happened late this afternoon. Just ahead of nightfall, city engineers inspect the exterior of a building that partially collapsed just hours earlier. Yeah, I would say I'm still shocked. Yeah, I don't expect buildings to fall down. Derek Cheshire owns Cheshire Motorsports, the business directly below the part of the building that came crashing down. He says dust and bricks from the collapse filled his shop. I figured with all these potholes across the street, I figured it was a big lumber truck hit a pothole or something, but then as soon as the dust came in, I figured it was a drywall truck that hit a pothole. But no, the building just fell down. It almost in a weird way sounded like a bomb went off. It was it was that loud. Joe Greer was at a nearby coffee shop when part of the building that sits at Southeast 48th and Division gave way. Holy crap, this side of the building just fell off. He shot this video with his cell phone. I ran over there and uh, quickly was able to tell that for the most part no one was underneath the brick, which was obviously the biggest concern because that could have... That could, have, that could have messed up somebody pr pretty bad. No question about it. And in the end, there were no injuries. But firefighters didn't want to take any chances. They evacuated all the businesses in the now damaged building and called in those previously mentioned engineers. Those uh, engineers will be out here. They'll, they'll look at the damage that's already happened, decide if that has caused damage to the actual structural components of that building or if it's just that facade, and then what's the safest way that we can remove the rest of that facade. A facade that, according to Derek Cheshire, has never looked quite right. I've never worried about it, but it has been bowing. I've been here for 10 years, and it's, it's bowed for a while. All right, back out here live, another look at that fencing. You'll also notice some cones and some barricades. It has several blocks of westbound division shut down in this area, so you'll want to keep that in mind if you're heading out into this neighborhood. In the meantime, uh, we're just not sure at this hour what caused uh, this partial building collapse. We'll be sure to stay on top of the story and bring you the very latest as we get it. For now, back to you in the studio. Mike, thanks. New tonight, Portland police say they have arrested the man caught on camera throwing a road flare into a police car at Monday's May Day riot. They say he also threw flares into the Target store downtown. 22-year-old Damian Feller faces arson and riot charges. Police say community tips and video from Monday helped them identify Feller. We found out he was also arrested for lighting a flare at another protest in March. This makes the 26th arrest after Monday's march got out of control. A hiker is in the hospital right now with life-threatening injuries after he fell 150 feet off a trail in the gorge. He was hiking Angel's Rest when it happened this afternoon. Sheriff's deputies tell us he was sitting down to rest when something fell out from under him and he fell down the cliff. Crews found him quickly, then firefighters set up a rope rescue system to pull the man out. The 30-year-old was then taken by life flight to the hospital. We're learning tonight about a troubling case out of St. Helens. Police found a man high on drugs, passed out in his car with his two young daughters sleeping in the back seat. The night team's Captain Cook is in St. Helens with the details. 
and they really feel bad for the little girls ages six and nine years old. One of them handed the officer a meth pipe when he discovered them in the car. Officers found 36 year old Richard Shelby passed out behind the wheel around 330 Sunday morning. The car was parked on South 18th and Church Street in St. Helens. Its engine was running and lights were on. Inside the car, police found a loaded gun, methamphetamine, several pipes and drug making paraphernalia. They arrested Shelby and placed his daughters in state custody. It's so sad. I'm glad the police at least found the car so the little girls are okay. I mean, gosh, who would do that? Who would do that? Shelby is in the Columbia County Jail. He faces several charges, including DUII and reckless endangering. Back to you. A Southeast Portland family tells us they're grateful no one was hurt after a suspected drunk driver crashed right into their front yard. This happened Tuesday at a home on Southeast 172nd Avenue near Foster. The sheriff's office released photos of what it looked like. The truck came to a stop just a few feet from the house. On top of the scary situation, the driver asked the family not to call the police, then asked, if he could hide inside the house. He asked my dad, he was like, can I come in? But of course my dad would say no. And he just kept trying to push my dad to do stuff that he didn't want to do. Police say the driver was this man, 27 year old Vincente Bursiago. He tried hiding next door, but was tracked down by a canine officer. He's now charged with DUII. Well, hopefully you got a chance to spend some time outside today. The weather was spectacular and Anywhere outside, basically, was the place to be. What a great day. Restaurants in Northwest Portland set up their outdoor tables, knowing customers would want to sit outside, of course. Waterfront Park was also packed with people. They were exercising, relaxing, just enjoying all the sun. Everywhere we went, people were celebrating the weather. I feel like a corpse that just went out and got a new life. <laughs> I feel awesome. The shoes, yes, I have not worn these at all yet. And um, it's time to for bright colors on the toe. It's a beautiful sunny day in Portland, and that's pretty rare, so you got to take advantage. Sure do. We were lucky enough to get to spend the early evening newscast outside, Matt, and we actually made it past 80, right? We did. In fact, we made it up to 82 in Portland, the final number here, 83 Vancouver, 83 Troutdale, Aurora. 84 got toasty out there this afternoon, right? Really, really pleasant temperatures here in the Portland area. Their first time of the year in the 80s, our first time in the 80s since we hit 89 back on September 26th. Medford made 90. First time we've seen a 90 on the map in Oregon this spot this year as well. And uh, the Dallas is right behind with 86. So those are the happy totals from today. Even Astoria made it up to 71. We'll get to that coastal sky cam uh, from Canada Beach a little bit later right now. It's nice out there. It's 67. You know, our high for the month for the year actually before today was 69, which is where we were last hour and we're just barely below that right now. So another warm night on the way tonight. We'll be in the 80s again tomorrow. We'll let you know about that. It'll be close. Thunderstorm potential grows tomorrow night, not just over the Cascades and the coast chains, but even for the valleys. Then the weekend has a bit of a split personality. We'll explain that a little later as well. Back to you guys. We'll see you then, Matt. Thanks. Meantime, in the Midwest tonight, many areas still dealing with extreme flooding. Heavy rains have rivers in Missouri, Illinois, Oklahoma, and Arkansas at record high levels. Near St. Louis, sandbags are holding back a river, but more rain is coming in the next few days. Severe flooding on the Mississippi River has shut down a bridge that connects Missouri to Illinois. And at least one small town has been evacuated as the high river threatens to collapse a levee. And the flooding made for some scary moments for some students in Louisiana today. Look at that. A school bus driver tried to drive through that flooded road. And you see what happened. Didn't make it, tipping to the right, and then the bus got stuck. Fortunately, all those students are safe. Nobody was hurt. But police are using this as a reminder to drivers everywhere. Never try to drive through standing water. Take a look at what happened to another school bus. This was in Oklahoma from the bus dash cam. You can see a crash happens right in front of it. Two trucks hit other cars, then rolls over. It stops just short of the bus that was full of students. No one on the bus was hurt, but the drivers in the vehicles involved were all taken to the hospital. 
The woman who hit and killed two young girls who were playing in a pile of leaves in Forest Grove just had her conviction overturned. This happened back in 2013. The decision today came from the Oregon Court of Appeals. Cynthia Garcia Cisneros didn't know the girls were there in that pile of leaves. It wasn't until later that she learned she may have hit someone. The court ruled that under those circumstances, she was not required under Oregon law to return to the scene. A fourth man is now accusing Seattle's mayor of sexually abusing him. Attorneys for Maurice Jones say he was a teenage prostitute when he had two encounters with Ed Murray back in the 1980s. He says he was introduced to the mayor by the alleged victim who's suing the mayor. Maurice described to us was uh, basically two encounters with the mayor where the mayor paid him money uh, in exchange for sex. Um, and so that unfortunately was the life that Maurice was living at that time. And from our perspective, the mayor preyed upon him and his vulnerabilities. The mayor's spokesperson calls this latest declaration an ambush, copycat, false accusation. In Salem, police say a drunk driver drove through the wall of a bar. The car ended up completely inside that bar. This happened at Triangle Tavern on Liberty Road just after midnight last night. This is surveillance video from the bar. Wow, look at that. Police say 29-year-old Daniel Weiss had been drinking at the bar, but then he left. A little while later, they say he, he did this, drove his car right into the building. One person who was inside the bar has minor injuries and Weiss faces multiple charges. Next from the